You might have to cut the camera. <laughs> Hi everyone! This recording marks our move to the next Queen album, which is, if I check my list here, News of the World. I wonder what sort of news we're going to find on this album. Well, before I dive in, let me remind you that you can always check out my Coffee and Patreon pages where you can find exclusive access to videos which will never be published here on YouTube due to copyright issues, like Jimi Hendrix, Eagles, the Beatles 150 series, and so on, as well as early access to all Virgin Rock videos and a special music theory course. Well, let me see what Vlad has written as far as background information, and we'll go from there. No, this time you will not read before listening. Okay. You will read after you will listen, because myself and probably the community as well um, are kind of curious to see what kind of interpretation you will give to this song. I, I will only I will only tell you that this song was composed by Bran May. Okay, that sounds like fun. Well, I hear the name Brian May and I guess the song we listened to yesterday is one where I mentioned that my appreciation for Brian May is growing. So now I'm suddenly very eager to see what this is all about. She came without a farthing, a babe without a name. So much ado about nothing is what she tried to say. So much ado, my lover, so many games we played. Through every fleeted summer, through every precious day. All dead, all dead, all the dreams. I don't want to be crying right now. 
You might have to cut the camera. I won't. <laughs> Thank you. What to say? Well, of course, it's not just the music, it's the lyrics too. Um. Okay, maybe you should read now. I, okay. <laughs> I will read before I say anything. All Dead, All Dead was written and sung by Brian May with Freddie Mercury on backing vocals. May also plays piano. That was May playing piano. Lyrically, the song deals with May's experiences following the death of his childhood pet cat. <laughs> Pixie who was like a sibling to him and was a major part of his childhood. In a, in a 1983 interview with Guitar Magazine, May spoke about the song. That's one of my favorites, he said. That was one of the ones which I thought came off best and I was really pleased with the sound. It always gives me a surprise when I listen to it because it was meant to really bring tears to your eyes. <laughs> It almost does it to me. Maybe some of you feel like um, with my kind of education and analytical approach to music, I can be rather cold and hard-hearted, but well, here we are. <laughs> I didn't take it as being about a cat. Although that is awfully sweet. It's incredibly sweet. It was a friend. It was his childhood friend. And what a beautiful memory and, and, and relationship. And how special, really, when I stop and think about it. <laughs> but to me, it's so much more than that. And the music, it's not really mournful. It's this... It's this hopeful quality. I wouldn't say that it's, um, well, it has a sort of lightheartedness to it, but it's not flippant. It's not, it's not trite. Um, there's a tenderness to it. And I'm picturing, of course, an older gentleman who has lost his wife of how many decades, right? And who was also his, obviously his best friend. And they had a beautiful life together. And, and he's so happy for every moment that they spent together. And he's thinking back on it in this song. I, I feel, I feel this sort of reflection, um, looking back at the times that were. Not in a sad way. Happy about the times that, is, that existed, that were. And I guess that's what's so beautiful about it. And that's what, that's what caught me off guard is this, this combination of, of sweet reflection, happiness for what was, the the hard truth of the fact that that time is gone and yet we would never never choose to have lived without it it was incredibly beautiful well i'm going to need one more tissue to dry my eyes and then i will try to go back through and be a little bit more cold-hearted and analytical <laughs> I like the chord progressions in this opening and well it starts with a it starts us off in the key of F major 
but without playing a straight F chord, we instantly, the very first thing we have is an F chord with the seventh added. F major chord and then a major seventh. It's the seventh degree of the scale. Well, there are, there are different kinds of seven chords. It depends on whether you're playing a major or a minor seven and, well, let's take that back. Yes, whether you're playing a major or minor seven and whether you're playing a major or minor triad beneath it. This is a major chord with a major seven. It's not the most common seven chord. Our most common is a major chord with a minor seven. That's what we call a dominant seven because it happens on the dominant note of the scale, the five, very often. And this is what we s use as the classic example of taking us back to one. This one, we still find it in music. But it's so interesting the way that's, a, that's the very thing that we start off with. Kind of catches our ears as, oh, it's a little bit edgy, a little bit dissonant. Why? What's going on? And then we launch into this, basically it's a B flat. However far it goes up. And then we end up working around that a bit till the end on the F and working back and forth with this same note that was part of the seven chord and now suddenly it's taking us home almost of it as if it's a five one five one five one let's listen to this opening again because i like the way we start with just this one chord and then it's as if the chord is pulled apart a bit taken apart and begins to function as two separate harmonic locations. There it is. There it is. And so we start feeling as if this F chord is being established as the place we live. But then we go through this wonderful sequence of, well, G minor, B flat, F. Let's turn this to red, excuse me. I um, need to make sure everything is in order here. Right. So, G minor, B flat, F, A minor, G, back to G minor. This time a a uh, C sharp kind of pushing us towards what? And then when the song actually begins, when, when the verse begins, we're in D minor. Where did D minor come from? How did we end up there? We traveled through all these chords after having established that F is where we're going to be. We suddenly find ourselves not on F, but on the relative minor, which also has the same B flat in the key signature. But from the very beginning, we're given this sort of positive, happy, a little bit of dissonant opening, and then it moves us to a more melancholy, mellow, reflective minor. And that sets us up for this entire set of lyrics, which is all of that and more. And it's such a nice way of preparing us, preparing our ears musically for what we're going to travel through. There's the chord. There's a four chord. And then we find ourselves traveling 
Here's the F, A minor, G minor. What a wonderful. And this D minor. But we're almost in a jig pattern. Bum 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 da 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 ba da 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 da. A jig is a is a dance with a sort of a triple feel to it. Um, the English word would be a jig, right? But there are jigs that go back centuries. All different countries. And so it has this kind of dense quality, but minor. And this voice, this is not Freddie's voice, this is Brian May's voice. It's a good thing they didn't put Freddie's voice here. You know, I have, I have really enjoyed exploring Freddie's part of Queen and his voice and his style and his flamboyance. But this is so wisely set, not with Freddie singing. Didn't I listen to one or two composed by Brian May already? But Freddie was singing, I think. Now here, it's not Freddie singing. And I don't know who made that decision. Was it Brian who said, I want to do this? Or was it a group um, decision? of what's best for the song. I don't know, but such a great decision. He has a pretty nice voice and it suits this so well. She came without a father, a babe without a name. So much ado about nothing is what she tried to say. So much ado, my lover, so many games we played. Through every fleeted summer, through every precious day, all dead. All of this up until this point is such classic Gigue style. Even the melody is a sort of folk song carol um, quality to it childlike innocent sweet small gentle all the all the delicate and sensitive adjectives and then suddenly we're hit with all dead all dead this is where i started thinking how does this happen who's all dead all the dreams we had, and I wonder why I still live on. All dead, all dead, and alone I'm spared. My sweeter half instead, all dead and gone. And we suddenly realize why the melancholy D minor, why this sensitivity, why this tenderness this feeling of reflective looking back that we feel in the music. But it's still not sad, it's not mournful. This balance of keep it light, keep it, keep it kind of a, a sort of happy sadness. Through every fleeted summer, through every precious day, all dead, all dead, all the dreams we had, and I wonder why I still live on. All dead, all dead, and alone I'm spared, my sweeter heart instead, all dead and gone. All dead and gone, landing on the F major chord. What is this that's being done to us here? The, the happy parts are set in minor. 
the dead and gone is set in major. It's, it's a musical way of keeping us from settling too deeply into sadness or too, too carelessly into happiness by balancing the sad moments with bright sounds and the happy memories with mellow harmonies. A couple other things. I, I like this scale walking up here that we hear in the bass, both in the piano and in the bass. It works so well, this progression. Bomb, 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 bomb. And then, you know, it drops down for the, for the cadence there. And I also like this little progression that we find here. My sweeter half instead. Let's look at these chords because it's classic and so appropriate. So we've been kind of living in D minor and then we get to the, ver the, the chorus, all dead, all dead, and we start to find ourselves moving back towards a, an F major quality. We have F. Then F again, F again, B flat, C. That's the four and the five of F. F again. We're really establishing that the chorus is in F. This is, this is happy sonic qualities set with all dead, all dead, all the dreams we had. As we get to the end of that sequence, I won't take us all through. I don't want to belabor the point, but my sweeter half, there's an F chord. My sweeter half, we end up with an A major, so we have to throw in the C sharp. So that gives us a bit of a chromatic. Sweeter half instead and instead is a D minor. How can I explain this simply? Well, okay. D minor is the relative minor of the verse. That's the tonality of the verse. F is the tonal base of the chorus. We're starting here on F. We're ending on D minor. In between, we have A, which in F would be A minor, but it's brightened to A major, which gives us this chromatic step up at the same time it is the dominant of D minor. So by making this little chromatic step, it's taking us back to the D minor as a sort of home. But we don't really live there for long because then we're immediately back to all dead and gone. Gently set back down on F from a four to a five. Classic chord progressions. So smoothly placed and handled here, very effectively. And this little rest, all dead and gone. But it's major. I, I'm still, I'm, I am delighted with the way the music and the lyrics are set one against the other throughout this song. And I wonder why I still live on All dead, all dead In the long I'm spent My sweeter heart instead All dead and gone All dead Back to D minor, but the dance quality Major, All dead. walking up.
But this time, all dead and gone, we actually placed it on D minor, unlike the first time. And that's what takes us into this lovely guitar passage. I don't know if I can call it a solo. It's more like a guitar chorus. It's a, it's a, it's a whole guitar orchestra, guitar choir. Bass gives a nice warmth there, pulsing. This little passage here with, I mean, is this all guitar? I don't even know. It sounds like it has some strings or some something. I don't know really, but there's obviously guitar, there's bass and there's piano. I don't know what all that orchestral sound is. It could be guitar. I'm, under, I'm learning that guitar has a vast sonic range especially in the hands of brian may what was that especially in the hands of brian may. oh yes brian may is my favorite member of the band shifting i don't know but somehow these last two songs are really bringing brian may front and center to my attention and my appreciation so back to what's going on here I was talking about how these chord progressions we find here are actually drawn from what we found at the beginning of the piece of music. This, uh, well, of course, we have the A minor, the D minor, this, this intro pulsing on the piano. But when we get to here, look at this passage and notice here is the E which is the seven of the F chord. And here's the F. And that's what I talked about at the very beginning when I said, we're starting with an F major with a major seven, which is then kind of spread. It goes through a four, which is the B flat. And then we end up with a, on an E, which is the seven, back to the F. And it's the same little figure and, and harmonic concept placed here. I'm not going to go back to the top of the score to see if it's quoted exactly. It's obviously very close. And then this is the same sequence of G minor, B flat, F, A minor, G minor, followed by the C sharp with flat five that that I mentioned just briefly in passing near the beginning. And so this whole guitar solo section is rooted and grounded and, and built up out of the material we already have. Leave it to Brian May to create something so incredibly gorgeous that lives so comfortably in its own place. I like the way the bass slides down right here. slowed down, or as we would say in classical circles, 
um, there's this alargando effect, this broadening, stretching, spreading, kind of the difference between a little stream tinkling down the rocks and the moment when it flows into a large river where the water spreads and flows much more slowly, although there's a lot more carrying along. Here, it's done in such a way that suddenly we're no longer dancing. We are holding on to something. We are looking back and looking at ourselves and it's more sentimental it's more and i don't mean that it's a shallow sentimentality it's it's the emotional quality becomes deeper and more immediate I love that deep bass note. I am tempted to say that Brian May's piano playing is at least equal to Freddie's in competency. Why? Well, this isn't a really virtuosic piece, but it gets you around. But I've talked a couple times about how Freddie articulates certain notes, leaving a little space around them or a little bit of staccato. This playing is incredibly clean and precise. He's using the pedal, the damper pedal, as we call it, the one that lets all the notes ring very well. And it's especially noticeable in something like, you must forgive me. Notice how all the sound is cut off between forgive and me. Just a tiny little bit. The way he's handling the pedal and lifting his hands off the keys there is so well controlled. And we get this buoyancy give me and we settle and rest gently on me it's so nicely handled and it's the kind of playing that i really 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 try to get all my students to do they don't all do it because you have to care about what you're doing and you have to listen to what you're doing and you have to combine that care and that attention of your ear with what your hands are doing. It's not a virtuosic skill, but it's an incredibly pianistic skill. And I hear Brian May doing this on the piano so well at several points in this song. This is one place I want to point it out. I like his playing on the piano. And it's so interesting because I never even knew he played piano until now. It was always guitar, guitar. Well, obviously, he plays guitar really well, too. Now he's singing, playing piano. Really quite a fine musician, I would say. Let's listen. Let's back up and listen to this guitar solo one more time and how it moves into this alargando section where it's slowed and broadened. And, and think about how this is impacting the story that we're listening to.
It's as if the story has been told. This little um, jig, well, knowing that it's about a kitten, I can think of it as being representative of the kitten's playful ways and, and little feet dancing and jumping around and tumbling and the way kittens play. And then we get to the end of that story and the guitar enters. It's as if the guitar says, now, let me show you how I really feel about this. And all the emotions come pouring out and we're taken through this fabulously expressive um, expression. Can I say expressive expression? Anyway, I'm going to say expressive expression <laughs> of, of the way I feel about this memory and, and how much I miss it and how much I enjoyed it and how much I, I loved that part of my life. And then it wraps us up, leaves us hanging on this wonderfully dissonant chord here, kind of suspended. Her ways are always with me. I wonder all the while. But please, you must forgive me. I am old, but still a child. It's this expression of vulnerability and utterly beautiful, simple affection. And then we're back to the same tempo. All dead, all dead, and, well, let's listen to it. Looking back, thinking about how I am. I am old, but still a child. All dead, all dead, but I should believe. Time it comes to everyone. All dead, all dead. I should not grieve. In time it comes to everyone. This is where the honesty hits. This is where the first time through I realized that it was going to make me cry. <laughs> and maybe it's a very sentimental response, but it is a sentimental song. It's, it's, it's a memory of a special relationship, a special friend, a friend, whether it's a cat or a wife or or simply a, a friend that has been very close and is no longer here with us. It doesn't matter how we apply it, but it's the friendship and the relationship and the love and the the pleasure, the connection that was experienced during its during the lifetime of the two of them. And then we have to sit down and say, I should not grieve because it comes to everyone. It's going to come to me. There's going to be a day when I am gone. All dead, all dead. It will be somebody else's turn to say all dead, all dead. Assuming that I'm that kind of friend to somebody. But in hope, I breathe. Of course I don't believe. You're dead and gone. This idea that the friendship continues beyond the physical lifespan, the, the relationship, the love, the connection, the impact it has on one. We carry it with us for the rest of our life. And 
little kitten or a human being or any other creature relationship um it doesn't matter it's this incredibly honest sensitive and yet hopeful look at what these kinds of connections really do to a person and how they carry us through even the lonely parts of our life and to have a friend that can still carry you through the lonely parts of your life after that friend is dead and gone that is such a gift such a beautiful beautiful experience i know not everybody gets to have that kind of connection but i wish they would and this song will make anybody wish and it will make all of us who have any friends whether they be pets or people It will make us appreciate and value them and enjoy them. When it comes to everyone, all day, all day, pulling home by me. Of course, I don't believe you're dead and gone. All nice day. harmonies there in the voice. And just as simply as it has taken us through this experience, it ends. Just a gentle, arpeggiated F chord. Actually, I think it goes differently, but... And my heart needs tuning again. I just tuned it before I sat down. That's the nature of a harp. What a beautiful special little song this is. Obviously, it's going on my list of favorites. It might even be at the top for a while. I don't know if it will stay there, but um, it is incredibly special. And, well, this is Queen. And here is yet another facet of who they were as musicians, as a band, and as well as an, an example of one of the other members, then Freddie, the, the amount of value that each member brings to the band is, is really impressive. It's not just Freddie, although Freddie is fireworks. Clearly, it's not just Freddie, and this is a great example of how, well, this time it's Brian May, how Brian May brings something to the table for the band, and they all embrace it and take it up and offer this beautiful musical gift. Well. You know, where where is this journey going to go? I don't know. I have a lot more of Queen to listen to. But yesterday, I said that that song was the perfect pairing for Seaside Rendezvous because they're in a similar style. Suddenly, here we are at another style. Another, another musical representation, manifestation, piece of art that is completely different from what I've heard in their work so far. How many more am I going to hear? I don't know. But they excel at every musical effort that they choose to put themselves to. At least so far. That's what I've heard. I don't think I've heard a bad Queen song. You want to go to the seaside and party at the seaside? Go! You want to mourn a special friend? Well, it'll make anyone cry. You want to celebrate the 
passion you have for cars, go be in love with your car. I mean, they take you anywhere. And it's not, it's not so much about virtuosity that makes them shine like this. Yes, they're all competent in their musical skills. Um, Brian May is a great guitarist. Freddie is a great singer. Brian May is a great singer. Obviously, they have two great pianists. Uh, the bassist. I'm sorry, what was his name? John Deacon. John Deacon. And the drummer. I mean, they all bring something and they are good. Perhaps we could even say virtuosic with their skills, but it's not about the virtuosity. It is about the fact that every time they choose to do something musical together, they create a perfect experience for that subject, that topic. They pull you in and they give you exactly what they chose to offer there in that little moment, in that little musical, artistic expression. And really, I mean, that is, that is one of the ultimate goals of art, is to be able to, to bring in the viewer, the audience, the, the consumer, and get them to live that moment just as you would like them to. That's an accomplishment. That's a real accomplishment. And that is Queen. They have my respect. They have my admiration. And especially tonight, Brian May. This was a lot of fun. And I'll see what comes next. So I'll see you soon.